Happy Thursday to each and everyone. Once again, this is Teacher Claire. We are now heading towards the Chapter 3 of your research study. As such, in this video lesson, I will enhance your understanding of the parts of Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is labeled as Research Methodology and sometimes as Research Design and Methodology. Either of the two may be used anyway. Let's talk about the key terms. First is Methodology versus design methodology simply refers to the practical how of any given piece of research to make things clearer it's about how a researcher systematically plans a study to ensure valid and reliable results that address the research aims and objectives for example how did the researcher go about deciding on the following concerns is it numerical data word concepts and ideas or both in research it is known as the sampling design or the research participants this is called data collection methods this is known as the data analysis methods thus the methodology chapter aims to justify the design choices of the researcher by showing that the chosen methods and techniques are the best fit to achieve the research aims and objectives on that note, let's discuss on design. What is research design? The research design refers to the overall strategy that the researcher used in processing the different components of the study in a logical way, thereby ensuring to effectively address the research problem. There are three major types of research design. Their distinction is whether they focus on words, numbers, or both. The first one is qualitative. Qualitative design refers to research which focuses on collecting and analyzing words, written or spoken, and textual data. In simple terms, it is used to understand people's perceptions. The next one is quantitative design. Quantitative design focuses on measurement and testing using numerical data. It is confirmatory in nature, meaning to say you decide on accepting an idea based on how many believed in it as shown in numbers or percentage. Or you decide on connection between research variables by measuring relationship. The last one is the mixed method. As you probably guessed, the mixed method attempts to combine the best of both qualitative and quantitative methods to integrate perspectives and create a rich picture about the research study using numerical data. Now that you have gained ideas about the difference between methodology and design, let's move on to the parts of Chapter 3. Of course, commonly, every research chapter starts with a short introduction. In this part, the researcher simply states what the reader would expect the chapter includes. Here is an example. As signaled by the sample introduction, the next part of the chapter 3 is the research methodology which was already talked about. And here is an example. The next part is research design, which had also been explained earlier. Now look at the sample content in the next slide. Moving on to the next, we have the sampling procedure. When you conduct research about a group of people, it's rarely possible to collect data from every person in that group. Instead, you select a sample. The sample is a group of individuals who will actually participate in the research. To draw valid conclusions from your results, you have to carefully decide how you will select a sample that is representative of the group as a whole. There are two types of sampling methods. The first is probability sampling, which involves random selection, allowing you to make strong statistical inferences about the whole group. And the second is non-probability sampling. This one involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria allowing you to easily collect data. Under each type are four kinds of sampling which will be discussed in another video lesson. In this part of the chapter 3, you should clearly explain how you selected your samples or research participants. 
here is an example initial statement. After that statement, explain what is stratified random sampling and discuss its process and how you employ it in collecting the data you need. Do not also forget to include here the specific number of samples or research respondents the study will use. Next in line is a research instrument. A research instrument is a tool used to obtain, measure, and analyze data from subjects around the research topic. You need to decide the instrument to use based on the research design you have chosen, which could be quantitative, qualitative, or mixed method. There are five major research instruments to utilize. We have observation, interview, survey, focus groups, and documents and records, each of which may be classified into different kinds. Discussion on this would also be done in another video lesson. Look at the first paragraph sample for this part. For the succeeding paragraphs, you may define the chosen instrument. The last part of the chapter 3 is data gathering procedure. Data collection is the process of gathering and measuring information on research variables in a systematic way that enables the researcher to answer the research questions, to test hypotheses, and to evaluate outcomes. Some of the most common qualitative data collection techniques include open-ended surveys and questionnaires, interviews, focus groups, observation, and many more. In this part, the researcher has to describe the process of using the chosen research instruments employed in collecting data. Look at this example. That is a sample first paragraph for this part of the chapter 3. After this paragraph, the researcher has to explain how the data collected will be analyzed in accordance with the selected research design. For qualitative, the most common way of analyzing data is by categorizing them into themes and subthemes. And that is a simple discussion about the parts of Chapter 3. In writing your content, follow this format. Once again, I am Teacher Claire for ICOM Channel. Thank you for joining me in this video lesson. God bless you all and always wear a happy heart.